everyone, welcome back to Nishani. So on today's episode relating to crafts, we're going to be talking and I'm going to be sharing with you all um, my craft room. So this craft room has been a seven year project really. Well, to be fair, when I first started to craft back in 2012 um, as a hobby, when I just literally had a desk in a corner in an apartment that I was renting and just a tower shelf uh, shelving system. That was literally all I had. And that's okay, it's fine. Wherever you can find space to craft, go for it. Because we all have to start somewhere. And I moved into this house in April of 2017 and it has been a long project. In fact, I didn't complete this room until May of 2018 of this year. And for a whole year, I didn't even have anywhere to craft because all my craft supplies were in boxes and I didn't have anywhere to put it. So there you go. We all go through a journey. But just to share some ideas and tips um, that I learned along the way in case it's of any help to you. Um, I noticed that on apps like Pinterest, where you can get amazing inspirational craft room picture ideas, Maybe it's the type of crafter I am. Maybe I'm the odd one out, I don't know. And this is what I'd love to know from the audience that are interacting with this channel. I'm a crafter that loves various crafts. I love button art work, crafting. I love crocheting projects. I love knitting projects. I love, I've done some embroidery work before, sewing as well, just a little bit, but I like to get more involved in that. And what I found with the craft room pictures is that Although they were lovely and colourful and insp inspiring, they just seemed to be tailored for one particular craft at a time. So a lot of pictures I saw were more for, say, card making. So you had a whole array of uh, sections of shelvings where you can store your cards um, and like a spindle system. I don't know if that's the right word, but, you know, like an organiser where you can stack your um, stamps and card stamps that is and scissors um, and then you'll get someone that is more into say crochet or knitting where there's just wool everywhere which is great I need storage for all sorts so it did make it quite challenging actually making this craft room because you know I needed to store away buttons as well as beads as well as wool one day you know hopefully soon I'd like to get a sewing machine but you see my point right so um I really had to think hard about how I was going to design the most effective craft room possible. So that's why it probably took me a long time to figure it out and, and actually put something together. But I would, ha I would say it was definitely worth the wait and I'm so happy with my craft room. I don't think I'll change anything about it. Having said that, maybe in five years, who knows. But in terms of tips, I just wanted to say that when it comes to buttons and beads, I found over time when I had my uh, long tower IKEA sh like shelf box system, um, that the baskets I used to put in those shelves made it difficult when I needed to get my supplies quickly. I, I noticed that I spent probably more time searching for those buttons and beads and all sorts and, and had to really rely on my memory to find things. So I just quickly realized I wanted something that was clear and, and, and transparent so I know you can get these kind of tubes from art stores, so that, they're untipped, they're, they're really good to be fair. But when it comes to beads, like these tiny beads which I use in my um, button artwork, um, that wasn't the most easiest things to find in terms of storage. And I luckily found these kind of, I don't know if you call them test tubes, um, I'll, have, I'll, I'll try and share a link from Amazon where I got these particular type of tubes. I'll kind of bring a close up as to what I'm talking about. It's these kind of plastic. Oh, it's coming in focus. Come on, focus. There you go. So these type of tubes, I got a packet of 50 of them because I had so many beads. It wasn't. A, I didn't have a hard time store, um, storing all the beads away. But they they came really handy because now if I just need to quickly get certain colours of beads it's very, very visual so that really helps me and with the buttons um, just spice jars that's it from Ikea very simple very effective for me so this 
type of uh, storage system of the jars. It's literally just a spice spice rack that I got from Amazon. Um, and finally, these um, these particular uh, translucent clear stacking system is for nails. It's meant to be for nails, uh, nail polishes. And don't just assume everything's in the craft crafting area in terms of useful storage because this has proven very handy. But so whatever it takes, just like I said, keep an open mind. But I hope these tips may have helped you. Um, let me know if it did by um, leaving a comment below. But I'm also going to quickly show you something in my craft room, which um, you may have noticed and, you, and it has a very unique story. So I'm just about to show you this now. So continuing on with the tour of my craft room, I just wanted to stop and share with you all this particular drawing in my room. Now this drawing has um, a significant meaning to me personally, but also it's helped raise awareness of fibromyalgia. So back in April of 20. 18 of this year, <laughs> I had to think then, um, this drawing was actually shared on social media by myself um, and it was picked up by the Manchester Evening News in terms, they wanted to help raise awareness and the reason for that was because April of this year, Lady Gaga was meant to be continuing her Joanne tour, um, which unfortunately she had to cancel um, because of the severe symptoms she was experiencing in having fibromyalgia herself. In fact, the first concert that got cancelled happened to be Manchester, which was the concert I was due to go to. But to be honest, from one fibromyalgia sufferer to another, I have empathy for her because knowing firsthand what it's like to experience a severe fibromyalgia flare, it's, it's excruciating pain to the point where it can feel like all energy is being drained out of your, your body and soul. And that's what this drawing is what I'm trying to represent. Um, so I came across a image which I'm about to share with you all. It's a plastic mannequin figurine which is arched in this manner. And back in 2013 I came across that image and it caught my eye and it inspired me to to pick up a pencil and paper and draw. Because at the time of my accident in 2012 and up till 2014, I was experiencing severe fibromyalgia flares pretty much every fortnight. I would say that this person or that picture of the figurine is demonstrating someone that may have been shot in some manner. And they were just slowly dying of pain, like, almost all the energy and the pain is so excruciating that's what I could see in that particular image and that's why I drew it but now when I look at this picture it really inspires me because when I'm having bad fibro pain days um, not to the point say if it's a mini flare where I can feel the symptoms are getting worse and worse and that if I don't start acting and pacing myself and having a good saying to myself in my mind then I know that the severe flare is coming. It's almost like a prepared storm is coming. And you really have to sit, really have to listen to your body to know, you know, when you can start seeing the telltale signs. But also, when my mind is really starting to get me down about the way my body is feeling, you can really get stuck in a rut and the depression symptoms quickly start kicking in. But what I try to do is look, in, look at this picture and it reminds me of the time when my fibromyalgia severe plane, uh, flares were continuous. And it tells me that if I can get through that period, I can get through this. So that's what this drawing means to me. And I also wanted to, to, to explain that this drawing was also used to help raise awareness for fibromyalgia, which is absolutely amazing. So yeah, that's why um, I thought to quickly um, explain the reasoning behind this particular, particular drawing um, and that's why it's there and that it's also by me. So anyway, thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Let me know if you've enjoyed it by hitting the like button. Also, uh, share in the comments below any tips you might have 
with regards to your craft space or craft room or craft shed or whatever beautiful craft um, atmosphere you have in your home so that we can all learn together and uh, hope to see you in the next episode in the meantime take care and hope you guys have a great day lots of love here from the shiny Bye.